everyone. Welcome to this week's three things I learned last week. Thanks everybody for joining me. As always, I have so much fun putting these programs together um, just to share some of the things that I get super nerdy about. And I have three really exciting things to share with everybody this week. Quick reminder, and it's especially important this week because I have a, a product I want to talk to you all about. No paid promotion here. This is just uh, completely me sharing things that I'm super nerdy about. <laughs> so um, before I dive into my three things, I want to just do a shameless plug promotion for Lisey's. Um, the Lisey team is running Philadelphia's Broad Street Run on October 10th. It's a 10 mile run from North Philadelphia down to the sports complex. And as part of our training, we are also um, collecting money to support girls on the run and donations um, made to our, for our efforts will be matched dollar for dollar by Lisi, um, which we're really excited to be doing. So girls on the run is an organization that supports um, development for young girls and young women, uh, which also includes a, just an athletic and training component to it uh, that involves running. So please help us support this great effort, help cheer us on with our training. Lord only knows how this is gonna go in a couple of weeks, but we've all been working really hard for it and I'm sure we'll post all the pictures. So two, three things, two the three things I learned last week. Today, I wanna talk about mission-driven content and what that means. I wanna talk about UTM parameters, which I'll explain what that means, and um, a really cool tool that I just learned about last week. Maybe everybody knows about it, but I just learned about it last week for creating video content. So diving right in, talking about mission-driven content, I have had lots of conversations with friends and clients about the personal content people put, especially on LinkedIn in particular. And while I've always encouraged our clients to dive into that personal side, I understand that there is a apprehension to put themselves out there in a very personal way or share things about their personal life, not because they don't want to share those things, but they wonder how relevant it is to their service, their practice, their business. And so I'm sort of changing the script. I'm no longer calling this personal content because while I talk about my kids and my life, I don't talk about it, you know, just for the sake of talking about my kids, I talk about the lessons, the life lessons I'm learning uh, from my kids, and especially about things like communication and empathy and patience. Um, so <clears throat> I'm calling that content now, rather than personal content, think about it as mission-driven content. What are the things that you're experiencing in your life that are related to your mission as a professional, as a, you know, in your career, whatever the case might be? So just think about that in terms of flipping the script. Don't think about it as personal, think about it as your mission. And actually related to that today in my Google uh, Digest, my daily digest, I got a really interesting article that is called, you wanna know the truth about content marketing, nobody cares about your product or service. And it's not exactly related to the, the topic of personal content or missional, mission driven content, but it's actually really relevant, I think, overall to this topic. And I'm just gonna read an excerpt from it uh, for you. So it says, develop content talking about the problems and needs that this market niche, your ideal client, uh, target audience suffers and educate them about the possible solutions that exist in a very subtle way. You are letting them know that you are an expert on the subject and that you know how to solve it. You are doing an exercise in persuasion and they have some best practices in here and I'll post the link to the entire article um, in the comments below. But here's the number one thing and I do think this is where it connects to mission driven content. Always ask why. As you're preparing to post a piece of content, always ask why. Any content you, that you create should revolve around a why. That is, always think about why you are writing it and why it is important to your clients or potential clients. So again, going back to that personal versus mission-driven content, if you um, are thinking about the why, what is the purpose of posting this content for your audience, even if it does uncover a personal story or a personal anecdote, why is it relevant to your audience? I think you'll feel much more confident and comfortable sharing that mission-driven content. So then the next thing I wanna talk about, UTM tags. 
UTM tags, it's urchin tracking module. It's specific to Google and it's code that's attached to any URL um, to generate Google Analytics data for your digital marketing campaigns. I'm giving a presentation for the Legal Marketing Association Baltimore Local Steering Committee on Wednesday about building digital marketing campaigns and um, one of the key elements, in my opinion, is developing a really strong um, process and strategy around tagging, around uh, UTM parameters. So why do you need them? Um, for a few reasons. It lets you get really granular with the data. So, you know, of course, in Google Analytics, you can see all the traffic that comes to your site or a particular page from social. But UTM tags, UTM parameters allow you to get very specific to which platform and um, which campaign it relates to and sort of paints a much more rich picture of how your campaign content is performing. So I'm just going to give a very high level overview of UTMs. I really encourage you to um, reach out to me if you have any questions or if you want to talk more about them, um, or if you're really interested, you're welcome to register for the program on Wednesday. I'll put, again, I'll put a link to register below in the comments, but at its core, there's several parameters that you can set up and you can set them up in your marketing automation tool, in your social scheduler, um, or if you don't even have any of those quite yet, you can um, use the Google campaign URL builder. It's a free website. You can go in and fill out all these parameters and it will generate that link for you, that UTM link for you. So, um, but at its basic, you are going to need a campaign source. The campaign source is where the content is. That could be in a newsletter, in ads, on social media, et cetera. The campaign medium is the type of media used. So maybe, for example, if you have a display ad or a social media post or something like that, and then the campaign name is the name of the campaign. Really important to keep in mind, there's lots of best practices to learn here, but UTM codes are case sensitive. So um, just keep that in mind. And so here's how you can use them. Like I said, you can track the success of certain marketing initiatives. You can see how well certain social channels promote your content uh, versus when followers promote your content. You can um, track the same piece of content across multiple marketing channels, which is really helpful to see you know, if it's performing really well on LinkedIn and not so hot on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or something like that. Um, so if you have Google Analytics, Google will automatically track incoming campaigns and you can access them under audience in Google Analytics. You go to audience and you go to sources and then campaigns, and then you can click on each campaign to view the source and the mediums. Like I said, if you want to learn more about UTM tagging, please go ahead and sign up for the program on Wednesday. And if you are listening to this after September 29th, 2021, um, the URL posted below will actually also include a way to access the recording after the fact. So last thing I want to talk about today, actually, it's not really the last thing. I have a couple bonus things today, but one of the last of the three things I want to talk about today is tools for creating great video content. I was on site at a client last week, which was frankly, it was glorious to be on site for the first time in months, 18 months. Um, and <clears throat> we are doing a series of videos for individual um partners at this firm. And we're doing videos the best that we can in terms of recording over Zoom. And, you know, it is, it kind of is what it is. I think everybody's sort of making ends meet to a certain extent, especially if they're not comfortable bringing in a video crew and, and really kind of all being together in that way quite yet, which is the case with this firm. And my client shared with me something that kind of changed my world which is a teleprompter that works with your smart device and can lay over your laptop or uh, computer's webcam and actually has a uh, two-way mirror, or I don't know how to describe the glass, but ref reflective glass at a 45 degree angle. So you've got your smart device uh, with an app that scrolls the teleprompter script in mirror mode, which you have to acquire separately, but there's lots of free apps for that. And then it plays your teleprompter script or your script so that you can look directly at the camera while you're confidently recording videos. And that changed my world. I did not even know that these existed in an affordable um, way for you know us regular folks. I knew that there were apps that you could use so that if you're recording on your phone, or I even have an app here for my desktop, but I hated using it because I can tell when I read the video as I look down to read the script, it, it's not achieving the same thing. So 
Full disclosure, I ordered one from Amazon. It is supposed to come tomorrow. <laughs> um, it is a glide gear uh, teleprompter. So I'm going to give it a whirl. I'll let you know how it works on next week's show. So I have two bonus items. Actually, I only have one bonus item because I told you about Girls on the Run at the top of the, the show. Um, I just... I, I have to implore everybody who's listening to this to just be kind to one another. If you've ever watched Ellen DeGeneres, she always says that at the end of her show. And I gave a party for my mom's 75th birthday this weekend. We had a caterer, a very small, intimate event, but it, we had a caterer for it. And I used to work in food service, I don't know, uh, over a decade ago, almost 20 years ago, I guess, at this point. And it was, um, it almost seems like a different world than what uh these caterers and the staff were experiencing. I, I hung out in the kitchen for a little bit with them and they were telling me some really interesting stories, just experiences they've had really recently. And I, I feel like I'm witnessing this everybody, everywhere. People are just really anxious and you know the world is the world's kind of a crazy place right now. And I think the first thing that seems to be going from my perspective is just kindness towards one another. So I just thought today was a great day. It's a beautiful day outside. And I thought I would steal Ellen's uh, phrase and just encourage everyone to be kind to one another. And thank you, Nancy, for telling me that I'm always kind to others. <laughs> um, but thank you so much for tuning in today. It was so great to chat with you. I look forward to being with you again next week and reach out to me if you have any question. Talk to you next week. Mm -hmm.